in my last video, I went into the water and paddled out of the canyon. In this video, I will continue my journey and talk about the reservoir. I found two graves. Can this prove that there is a road here? No, maybe they got here by boat. I found a lighthouse, a small lighthouse. Xinfengjiang Reservoir is named after the river, and Xinfengjiang is the river's name. The dam was built in 1958. Before that, the river was navigable. The dam is 105 meters high and 440 meters long. In my last video, I mentioned that it's the 10th largest reservoir in China. Its total capacity is 14 cubic kilometers. The largest reservoir in China is the Three Gorges Reservoir, with a total capacity of 39 cubic kilometers. The capacity of the largest reservoir in America created by Hoover Dam is about the same size, 37 cubic kilometers. Both of them are not in the top 10 largest reservoirs in the world. They are in the top 30. At about 12.30 p.m., it's lunchtime. I landed on a peninsula and took some waffles for lunch. Waffles are really suited for outdoors. I found the air cushion was flat. This is the first time I'm using it. I talked with the shop owner online, and they sent me a new one. As I mentioned, the reservoir is vast, and its length and width are over 30 kilometers. If you'd like to discover every corner of it, it may take more than 10 days. In my next video, I will review my three-day and two-night kayaking trip in 2017. The rafting distance is about 50 kilometers, and we traverse the broadest waters. The most expansive stretch of the reservoir is right in front of us, and it's also the center. It's not very long, less than 10 kilometers. The reservoir is like a scorpion, so the broad waters are few. This trip wasn't planned to be so long. Initially, I just wanted to test the pack raft for an hour. But when I got into the water, I just fired up, so I decided to raft to the village I had visited to buy some water. The distance is a little bit long, about 15 kilometers, but it's okay. When I got into the water, it was not yet 10 o'clock. It was still early, I have enough time to raft to that village. I've paddled 10 kilometers so far, and there are still 5 kilometers to reach that village. My speed is about 4 kilometers per hour, so it will take me over an hour to get to that village. This reservoir is the largest lake in South China district but not the largest reservoir in this district. The largest reservoir in the district is like this. We cannot call it a lake. It's a bold river in the valley. Another thing that needs to be mentioned is the earthquake triggered by the reservoir. The construction of this dam began in 1958 and was completed in 1959. After that, the reservoir began to impound water. With the filling of the reservoir, earthquakes started to appear. In 1962, when the water level rose to 115 meters, a strong earthquake with a magnitude of 6.2 occurred. This is the most strong earthquake triggered by a reservoir in China. The earthquake caused dozens of casualties. Since then, there have been a few minor earthquakes every year. And the locals are used to it. Next, I'm gonna talk about migration when the reservoir was built. An area of 390 square kilometers will be flooded to build the reservoir. 100,000 people need to be displaced to other places. A small part of them moved to some places with higher elevations. Most of them relocated to other villages within 100 kilometers of the surrounding area. But many of them are not welcomed by locals and even be bullied or harassed. More than 20% of them returned to their hometowns by 1980. 
thousands returned to their hometowns after more than two decades of displacement. There was no suitable land for farming in their hometowns, and most of them had to reclaim land on hills. Before the relocation, most of the buildings were demolished, but some temples and ancestral halls were preserved. The buildings, once bustling with activity, now lie silent in the depths of the reservoir, dozens of meters below the surface. GoPro. Look at the beach over there, it's a really good camping site. There is a fishing net crossing the valley, hung by a series of floating buckets. It seems like someone is working there. There is a cave, many rocks in the cave. There is a gap in the stringed floating buckets for boats getting in and out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at the duteous dog. At about 2 p.m., I reached the village, and there was a water playground. I bought some bottled water and talked with the shop owner. I found out there wasn't any public transportation. I was a little tired and didn't want to paddle back. The shop owner, a kind man, called a taxi driver in the village and asked for the price to get to where I parked my bike. The offered price was 100 RMB, about 15 US dollars, for the 20 kilometer distance. I thought the price was high, and since it was still early, I decided to walk back. My arms were sore, but my legs were fine. I planned to take a taxi from the villages along the road if I got too exhausted. The shop owner, hearing my plan, offered me another option. He was a fan of paddleboarding and knew of a suitable landing spot that would save me some distance. I was really grateful for his help. At about 2.30 p.m., I got into the water again.
看到吗，朋友们？这边是上岸的地方。I reached the destination in less than an hour. It was about three kilometers away. The landing spot was excellent, with a paved road leading right into the water. I saw fishing equipment, but I couldn't spot the person using it. There was also a beehive and a small hydroelectric power plant, but the upstream of the power plant wasn't a river. It was a series of pipes. The last time I saw a similar power plant was in Yangshi Province. That one had a capacity of 400 kilowatts. The power of a car is typically around 100 kilowatts, so that small power plant is equivalent to four cars. An air conditioner uses around 2 kilowatts, so this power plant could power 200 air conditioners simultaneously. That's enough to supply a small town in some countries. I carried my bag uphill for a few hundred meters to reach the main road. That was tiring. I'll bring my folding cart next time. As soon as I got to the main road, a cargo van passed by, and I flagged it down. The van was plastered with Hualala ads. It's like a cargo version of Uber. The price was around 3 RMB per kilometer or about 0.4 US dollars. My bike was about 15 kilometers away, so I paid the driver 50 RMB or about 7 US dollars. I reached my van around 5 PM. That's the end of this video. Next time, I'll show you a review of my 3-day, 2-night kayaking trip in 2017. See you next time.